uh, what the major difference has been with Coach McGuire, uh, the, the thing that he does differently than before? Yeah, I think uh, Coach McGuire, um, you know, he's brought great energy to us. And, um, yeah, he just has a lot of experience in this type of offense, you know, coaching at Washington State when they turned it around with um, Coach Leach. Um, and then, obviously, at Texas State, too, when they ran a similar offense. So I think that's uh, helped tremendously, you know, to have a mentor like that that's been in the offense for years and years and has – a ton of experience and has also coached um, really good offensive linemen, such as like Andre Dillard up at Washington State um, and players like that. So um, I think technique wise, uh, what we're doing really fits this offense and also uh, how we're identifying things and, um, you know, it's really going to benefit us a lot. Yeah, to speak to that, I think, um, Having somebody who knows the different nuances and ins and outs of um, some of the different types of techniques and things that you have to do to play O line in the air raid system, uh, I think that's been really helpful with us um, in terms of IDing things and being able to play faster within the system without having to um, think as much and to be able to play with tempo like the air raid system is supposed to be. So I think that's helped a lot out a lot at, on that front, and then. Um, Mentality and character-wise, I think um, Coach has done a good job of bringing up uh, a lot of the young guys and making sure that they're developing at the same token. Uh, and uh, I think those two things are kind of the things that stand out to me about what's been different. Uh, for either guy, is there one, one good example that is something that's just specifically relative to an, an air raid system that you guys maybe weren't doing before, but now is going to be a part of the way you have to operate? Um, I think, you know, just our, the way we're pass setting now, um, is, is different. And also, you know, he preaches a lot of physicality and, uh, we've been super in tune, uh, with goal line and short yardage and being physical on the run. And, um, even, uh, you know, just IDing the runs too. Um, there might be a change there that you guys see and, um, it's super exciting and, um, you know, he is, while he is like super experienced with the pass sets and all that, you know, he is really aggressive and, you know, wants us to run the ball. And um, so I think those two are kind of some big changes. Okay, I see that uh, Coach McGuire's on. He's walking to his, to the office. So we'll take another question here for the players and we'll, we'll let uh, Coach get situated. Um, Adam Grossbart. Yeah, um, for either of you guys, uh, your unit returns four starters from last year. I guess just where, what, where do you guys want to improve as a starting line from last year and you know, what, what does that extra year of chemistry help you guys do moving forward? I think that's one area, like you just said, it, that we wanted to definitely improve. Um, going from last year, not being able to practice together in the off season, we lucked out because most of us had started before um, with each other and played meaningful snaps together in games. So um, the chemistry and continuity aspect was a little bit helped by that, even though we weren't able to grow that during COVID and everything being virtual. So I think taking this off season, it's been a focus for us to take a step-by-step -step of the process of um, gelling together as a, as, as a five alignment. And there's new faces in the room now, new faces that are gonna have to help us. So I think that's been the most important part for us is just taking the time um, throughout the off season and every step, every day of practice is different. And whether it be third down day, first down day, goal line day, just taking um, the proper steps to um, hone in on our technique and hone in on the chemistry of all five of us being on the same page at all times and being able to um, command the offense as we go um, by how us five move. So I think that's the biggest thing that we've been trying to work on um, throughout this time in the offseason that we really didn't have last year. 
Thank you. Yeah, I think to piggyback off that, you know, um, we didn't, like J Mac said, we didn't have an off season last year. And uh, when we came back, you know, we were lifting outside and, you know, we couldn't really get that, um, you know, off season working like we are now. And I think a lot of us, us with Coach Steiner and, uh, you know, the spring ball are seeing lots of improvement because, you know, we kind of missed out on a whole summer slash spring of that. And, uh, you know, as much as you can work out at home, it's not the same as, you know, going into the, the facilities here and being able to compete against your teammates. Um, so I think that'll be, you know, huge for us and also huge for the, the O-line, you know. Um, we spent a lot of time apart from each other last year and then we kind of you know got the word last minute we're playing and we got the word last minute that you know we got to come back and lift outside and then um, you know it was a short season and um, so you know this is a, a full year for us so I think that's going to be huge. Okay, uh, Ryan and Mark, I see you have your hands raised. Hold your questions for a second here. Let's bring on uh, Coach McGuire. Uh, Coach, thanks for joining us. I know you were scrambling to get here. We appreciate you making it. Um, if you can maybe just uh, make a couple comments about uh, how things have gone so far uh, for you in, in spring ball, what, what, uh, what you see from your, your position group, and, uh, and then we'll take some questions and go back to the questions. I think uh, things are going pretty well. Um, obviously, coming in, the, the offense hasn't changed. It's just uh, some of the terminology and some of the things that, uh, you know, maybe my philosophy and principles we're trying to teach and incorporate uh, has. So it's not really new, but there is some newness to it. Uh, like Brett and J-Max said, you know, these, you know, this is the first uh, spring ball they've had really in two years, you know. So I know they got one practice last year so you know, just getting to work on a lot of the continuity and the development of the players uh, is huge right now. And I think things are, you know, to me, you know, kind of my, what I've been seeing is, is every day we've been getting better, you know, and I think, um, you know, that's the ultimate goal is uh, for the group to continue to have a steady process of development uh, to, to reach our ultimate goal of being able to win every game. And so um, I think things are going well. I think every day they, the, you know, we've got a really good group of kids uh, from a character standpoint. Um, this is one of the best groups of kids I've ever been around and they come and they work hard and uh, they're very coachable. Uh, they buy into what what you say. And, you know, for the most part, we've been able to, you know, talk about things uh, in the meeting room and go out there and execute them and fix it when we do have problems and mistakes. So very excited about, you know, the opportunity to coach these guys and, and what, you know, what the, you know, what their potential level is, because I think if we can reach that, we have a chance to be really good. Okay, Coach, thanks. Let's uh, go back to some questions here again. Just raise your hand. Uh, we'll go to Ryan Karchi. Good morning, Clay. I, I know we've seen Cortland Ford uh, at that first team left tackle spot throughout most of spring. What's he just generally shown you since uh, you came on board? Uh, you know, just he's, he's a guy that showed up every day. He's got a great attitude. He works really hard. Uh, he competes. I think he has a uh, a really good skill set. Um, I think, you know, we got a couple guys in that room that that really have the potential to be really, really good tackles. Um, you know, and so Cortland's done a really good job. Like I said every single day he shows up. Uh, you're getting his best. He's in tune. He's focused. He's 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 in there. He's not somewhere else. You know what I mean? Like it's, uh, you know, we're in the meeting rooms. We're on the field. It's the most important thing in his life at that point. And so, uh, with that approach, you know, like I said he's done some really good things for us and. You know, like I said, he looks like he's going to be a good option for us at the tackle position as well as a few other guys. And I know uh, Coach Heldon talked about shuffling the offensive line quite a bit. It seems like we've seen mainly the same first team line. Are, are you pleased with that group or do you anticipate kind of doing more shuffling as spring? And no, I, I think we've done some good things and I like where we're headed. We are going to shuffle the line. Uh, we kind of wanted to get to this point. We really only had, you know, it says nine practices, but it's really, it's really been five practices, you know, the two helmet practices. We've had three uh, helmet only practices and, and kind of a prep practice for a spring game as well as a spring game. So, you know, when it comes down, we've only had five true, you know, spring ball practices. So trying to get a little evaluation in there and then kind of see where we're at a little bit. And then, you know, we're going to get a little, we've got six practices to really kind of make it uncomfortable. We got a, uh, we're going to, we're going to flip flop some guys and we're going to put some guys in positions and, 
you know, kind of reorder the lineup a little bit just to uh, just to figure out and see who who our best, you know, five to eight guys are. And when we figure that we're going to uh, a fall camp, we'll have a really good idea of how we're going to want to play the season uh, with our with our guys. OK, we'll continue with questions for coach or the players. Uh, Mark Calkin. Good morning, guys. Uh, Coach, and, and for the players, um, I don't think it's any secret that, you know, the offensive line is kind of under the microscope this spring, and you're returning four starters from last year. Uh, do you guys feel any pressure to, to, to kind of to be that anchor this year um, so the team can gravitate around that? Uh, you know, for me, um, you know, I, I don't know necessarily say feel the pressure. I mean, obviously just getting here, um, understand I got a good opportunity to have four starters back and have some guys that are behind those guys that have played some football that have the ability to be really good. Um, but, you know, the expectation for us is, is we're going to go out there and compete as hard as we can, and we're going to expect to be the best uh, out there. And that's our goal. And, um, you know, we, we know we have really good skilled players. Uh, we know we have a great quarterback. Um, you know, it's our job to go out there and, and be on that same level or even better. And, and to, uh, you know, when, when, when SC is winning championships, when anybody in college football is winning championships, they're great up front. And, and nobody came here to, to SC not to win a championship. And so, you know, we understand what the expectations are. And, and you, know, uh, you know, we're working diligently every single day to make sure that we hold up our end to make sure we have give our team an opportunity to win those championships. And, and you have to be good up front, and we understand that. Fred or Jalen, do you want to add to that about possibly feeling pressured? Um, in my opinion, I feel like whenever, you know, you strap up for the type of program that you, that we're at, um, you feel some type of pressure to succeed and pressure to play well. But, um, I think more it's a pressure on ourselves that we're putting, um, to be accountable to our teammates. And like coach is saying, um, as the offense goes, we go and, um, we're the we're the thing that keeps it running and um when when things are when everybody's looking to somebody they're going to look to us and we even saw that happen last season uh in the regular season when we had to win a lot of games down the stretch really grind a couple wins out we had to grind it out um through the o-line and 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 and, and through and through the offensive testament of, of how we work together so i think that's the biggest point um for us this season is putting pressure on ourselves to um, do our best within within the offense to make everything work together because we see how good we can be and how potent of an offense we can be. And um, as our run game goes, we know that we'll be uh, go from a potent offense to an unstoppable one. So I think that's the biggest point of pressure we put on ourselves is just keeping our accountability to our teammates up and doing our job within, within the offense and doing our job um, to the standard that, that we hold ourselves to here at USC. So. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to uh, RJ. Hey, Clay, I was wondering um, how much of a priority short yardage and goal line situations have been for you guys specifically, and what are kind of the teaching points that you've been focusing on for winning those kind of battles? Well, you know, it, it has been a focus and a priority this spring. We've had a, you know, Coach Helton has actually designated, you know, one of our practices and, and some, some, some special periods just for those uh, – particular uh, scenarios and situationals in the game. And so we've got to work on it quite a bit in the spring where typically you don't. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I mean, the focus on it is high. Part of that is one is just, you know, making sure everybody's on the same page, understanding where we're trying to put the ball, the running backs understand where we're trying to go with it. Uh, and then two, it's a mentality. All right? We can have the greatest scheme in the world, um, but if we don't have the right mentality and approach to uh, execute those uh, situations, then it isn't going to matter. And so it doesn't, you know, the first thing we got to get is, is, like I said, you know, make sure our mentality is right. And that we're going to get that thing no matter what. It doesn't matter what defense they play, whatever, that, you know, whatever we do is going to be better than what they do. And we're going to, we're going to, you know, we're going to convert the first down. Two is getting everybody on the same page and make sure we execute our individual position our, our individual jobs at a high level together 
and we should be able to. It's our jobs to put them in great situations, and, and it's it's the players' jobs to have the right mentality uh, and 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 fundamentals to be able to execute at a high level in those situations. And then for Brett and Jalen, who on the defense has consistently been giving you guys the best battle this spring? And then are there any individuals in your room who have impressed you? Yeah, I think uh, one guy that sticks out um, that brings it every day is Thule. Um, you know, his motor is incredible, uh, awesome player. Um, I, th I think he's going to be, you know, really good this season and, and have a big season for us. Um, you know, he's a great person off the field and um, he works extremely hard. And um, yeah, his, I mean, he just plays with relentless effort and, um, you know, is a very good player. So I think he's going to have a great season and um, he continues to be the, a hard one to block, you know, and you have to bring it every time he lines up against you. I mean, I think for me, blocking edge rushers, it's kind of obvious, but I mean, Jerry Jackson and our team, he's a stellar pass rusher. And every time we go against each other, um, we always tell each other we're taking next level reps. So I think that kind of competition is just um, what breeds greatness at USC. When you go back and you watch the old film of guys like um, Tyron Smith doing one-on-ones against Everson Griffin, you, you think about how valuable those reps are in that inner squad competition so I think um, Drake has been doing a great job his motor also is great our whole defense has been playing with um, an incredible motor that uh, us as an offense we have to be able to bring that same um, energy or bring that same enthusiasm every day at practice so it's keeping the uh, competitive juices flowing all the way through practice and all the way through every drill um, and so I think that being able to have a D-line such as talented as we do uh, only just helps us every day we go out there and practice. Um, they're giving us new looks. They're giving us moves that sometimes it's only our guys can do. So there, there, there's definitely a benefit there in, in going at it with our own guys and going at it with the stellar guys we got. And in the in the room, I'd say um, I've been really proud of uh, Andrew Malik, who we just played the spring game in, and just being able to come in as a as a new um, guy and being. This is first spring as under center and, you know, just being able to try to um, take everything in and, and, and learning every day. And just, and just I've seen his improvement every day and his confidence grow. So I think that's the biggest thing is um, seeing guys confidence grow and seeing guys um, get a real foothold in the system. So. Thank you guys. Okay. Let's uh, jump to Antonio. Hey, Clay, I, I know you inherited a, a lot of second-year offensive linemen when you came here. You touched on Cortland a bit, but could you, you know, update us on where you think Jonah and Casey and Malek and guys like that stand? Yeah, you know, Jonah's had a really good camp. Um, Jonah's really talented. Um, he, he really reminds me of a guy that I coached at Washington State, a guy named Joe Dahl, who was a great player for us up there and, and is still playing the NFL right now. Um, but I think he's having a really good camp. He's really sharp. Um, not a real vocal guy, but, you know, every single day shows up and is extremely consistent and does a really good job out there. Um, Casey, um, you know, Casey's a guy that has incredible talent. Um, you know, I think a lot of the new terminology and things like that have been, you know, hard for him early on. But, you know, the last practice he had was the best practice he had. And when, it, when he knows what he's doing and when it's clicking for him, you know, he has, he has incredible ability. And so when we put it all together for him, he has the ability to be, you know, a, a rare talent, I think. And so I think that's coming down the road. And I said, Casey does a great, he's a great kid and he works really hard every single day. And at one point, you know, he, he really has a real opportunity to be a special player here. Uh, Millick has done a phenomenal job as Jay Mack was saying, um, you know, to come in and, and it gives us the opportunity to move Justin Didich around. He's having a great spring. Uh, Didich is probably the, I mean, you could argue right now through camp, you know, one of the toughest, hardest players, uh, you know, hardest uh, working players we have out there. And, and because what Millick's been able to do at center has given us the ability to move Didi around and give him the opportunity to really push and compete at other spots other than just the center position. So uh, those two guys have been extremely valuable for us to be able to, you know, like I said, work different lineups and, and get different people in the rotation. 
so that we can get, uh, you know, get looks at other people at different spots. It's, you know, like I said, so we can have an idea when we go to fall camp exactly who our guys are when we go in there and start prepping for game one. And what was the spring game like for you in order to see guys working with guys they hadn't worked with before and, you know, different combinations of, of guys working together? Yeah, I thought it was really good, actually, um, you know, to, to completely switch up the teams. And, 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 you know, the hardest part is the old line because they're typically used to playing next to somebody. And when you don't have those guys next to you, sometimes communication and, you know, things like that get off. But I thought for a spring game, halfway through spring ball, uh, switching the teams up, four different quarterbacks, you know, two, two different old lines, two different D. I mean, all the things that go into it, I thought it was a really clean spring game. I thought we got uh, a lot of really good work. I think it's just a testament. It shows you uh, what Coach Helen's been able to do with this team. I think there's a lot of really, you know, uh, really positive things that came out of that spring game <clears throat> with us being able to actually have that game and be able to split the teams up like that. Cause it's really hard to do, especially with numbers in the springtime. And uh, for our kids to be able to uh, pull that off was really a, a pretty good testament to them as well. And coach Helton. <clears throat> okay. We have time for one or two quick questions here. We'll go to we'll jump down to Eric McKinney. Coach with the spring game, were there any specifics players or, or plays or anything that, that jumped out of you? Uh, I'm trying to think, um, you know, they're, I mean, just off the top of my head, you know, with that question, you know, it doesn't even have anything to do with pertaining with the old line, but, you know, it just shows you how we have some really good young talent, but, you know, Jackson Dart hit Michael Jackson on a corner route that was an extremely tight window throw that, you know, they went back and they were just, they were just playing ball. Those, both those kids should be in high school right now. And it was an incredible throw and an incredible catch on the sideline. Uh, there was a couple of plays that, you know, Drake London had the ability, as you saw in one drive, to completely take the, the whole thing over. Uh, Keontae Ingram, you know, on the first uh, series, you know, kind of had some, some wild plays out there. So there's a couple of those drives that stand out. Um, there's a lot of opportunities out there for us to, um, you know, but, but to, to, to do some really good things. I think we're really close uh, in some areas, as we pointed out on film yesterday with the guys. But, you know, just off the top of my head, those are two plays that stand out to me, kind of. <clears throat> and what what was your goal by the end of spring with, with the offensive line as far as you know knowing your your starting five or just getting a better idea of kind of what you had to, but by the end of spring well, where, where did you want to get to well you know we still got six more practices so we still got some time to, to to work on that but the biggest thing is one is to uh you know to we've installed you know the terminology is different so we're, we're getting a great feel of where we're at as far as how we're going to call and how we're going to block things um, so we should have a good foundation of our core, you know, uh, our core beliefs, our, our core, you know, offensive, you know, philosophy or football in or, and then, uh, you know, to get a good foundation of our fundamentals built, uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough to get quite a bit of indie time there at Washington state, uh, in that offense and coach Helen gives us quite a bit of indie time here. And I, I really believe in fundamentals. And so I'm probably geared more, a little bit more towards fundamental work as opposed to walkthrough type things. And so uh, the guys are really doing a good job of building a good foundation, our fundamentals. I think that we can, I think we've improved quite a bit, but I think we can improve even more, uh, substantially more. And, and that's the goal is to continue to prove those things on a consistent basis throughout the season as well. It's not going straight into a straight walkthrough thing. And so, and then also try to build some continuity and try to figure out who our guys are. Uh, like I said, we have a good idea who they are, but, you know, there's guys showing up every single day and all of a sudden you're like, all right, I wonder what this guy could do with the ones, or I wonder what this guy could do at left tackle, or I wonder what this guy could do at right guard, you know? And so we're going to start mixing and matching and shuffling things around and kind of seeing what people look like at other positions and, and, you know, so we can have a good foundation and, and, and you know, going into fall camp of where we want to put guys. Okay, uh, I know we have a couple of questions left, but we do have to let coach get off to a meeting and, and release the players. So uh, we'll cut it at this. Just a couple of quick reminders to the media. Uh, today's uh, practice uh, at 3.30 or 3.25 is open for media viewing. We hope to see you out there. And we'll be back on Zoom on Thursday morning at 8 a.m. We'll have Coach Niver and uh, Safety Isaiah pull them out. So with that, Clay and, and Brett and Jalen, thanks for joining us. Media, thank you for being here. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks.